It's 2025 and most top tech companies are still asking lead code style questions in coding interviews. But getting started on lead code is harder than ever. With over 3000 problems, it's easy to feel overwhelmed and lost. How do you even start? Which problems should you solve? And how many problems are enough for coding interviews? I will answer these questions and more in this video. For context, I have solved over 1500 lead code problems and cleared interviews on multiple big tech companies including Amazon, Google and Microsoft. In this video, I will share everything I have learned to help you start lead code from zero, even if you have never solved a single coding problem before. I will share practical tips and resources to help you save time, stay focused and build your problem solving skills without feeling overwhelmed. You might be wondering, why is everyone doing lead code questions? Is it really necessary to land a software engineering job? The short answer is not always. There are plenty of startups and smaller companies that focus more on your experience with specific tech stacks and the projects you have built. They might not even include lead code style questions in their interview process. But if your dream is to work at big tech companies like Amazon, Google or Microsoft, you would need to practice lead code style questions since that's what they ask in their interviews. Which programming language to choose? It doesn't really matter. A programming language is just a tool. Once you understand the approach to solving a problem, you can implement it in any language. In my experience giving interviews, unless the job specifically requires expertise in a certain language, you will be fine using any language you are comfortable with. The point is, lead code isn't about syntax. It's about using the right data structures, algorithms, and your ability to think critically and solve problems. That said, if you're new to coding, I recommend starting with Python. It's beginner friendly and has a simpler syntax. If you already know a language, stick with it. Whether it's C++, Java, C Sharp, JavaScript, TypeScript or Go, there is no need to switch. You don't need to be an expert in your chosen language, but you should know basic things like variables and data types, for and while loops, if else conditions, arrays and strings, functions and classes, and input-output operations. Beyond the basics, you spend some time learning the built-in libraries for common data structures and algorithms. These libraries save time and let you focus on solving the problem rather than re-implementing data structures from scratch. For example, Python has lists, dictionaries, and sets. Java has ArrayList, HashMap, and Priority Queue. And C++ offers the STL library with vector, map, and set. Before diving into lead code problems, it's good to familiarize yourself with the fundamentals of data structures and algorithms. Start by understanding big O notation and time complexity. Basic data structures like arrays, strings, linked lists, stacks, queues, hash tables, and binary trees. And fundamental algorithms like sorting techniques, binary research, and recursion. Recursion is particularly important since many problems, especially tree and graph related ones, rely heavily on it. When you are familiar with these topics, it becomes much easier to recognize which concept applies to a specific problem. You don't need to dive too deeply into every topic up front. Most of your understanding will develop naturally as you solve problems. There are plenty of resources available online to help you get started with data structures and algorithms. Don't waste time searching for the perfect resource. Pick one and start learning. Here are some resources I personally found quite useful. For data structures, check out William Fisher's YouTube channel for visual and detailed explanations. For algorithms, refer to Abdul Bari's YouTube channel. And for DSA patterns, Algo Master IO. It's my second channel where I upload high quality animated tutorials on DSA and lead code patterns. If you are a beginner, focus on one topic at a time to avoid feeling overwhelmed. For example, start with arrays, then move on to strings, then progress to more complex topics like linked lists, hash tables, and binary trees. Once you have learned the basics of a topic and understand how to implement it from scratch, it's time to put your knowledge to test. Solve four to five easy problems related to that topic on lead code. This will reinforce your learning and build confidence in applying the concepts. If you open lead code, there are over 3000 problems. That number alone can feel overwhelming. So how do you decide which ones to solve? You start with easy problems for each topic. These are perfect for building confidence and understanding the basics of problem solving. Once you are comfortable with the easy ones, gradually challenge yourself with slightly harder problems that push you beyond your comfort zone. Remember, real growth happens when you constantly challenge yourself. Don't worry about hard problems at the beginning. Most coding interviews focus on medium level problems. So that's where you should spend the majority of your time. Leetcode also provides curated lists like the top 100 like problems, top 150 interview problems. These lists are excellent and I highly recommend solving every problem on them. How many problems should I solve? There is no magic number, but from my experience, 300 well chosen problem is the sweet spot. However, it's not about solving just any 300 problems. Focus on high quality problems that cover the most topics and patterns. To make it easier for you, I've created a free resource, a curated list of the top 300 lead code problems organized into 60 topics and patterns that are most commonly asked in coding interviews. You can find it at algomaster.io. Just head to the practice page, you will see a structured list of problems that you can follow from top to bottom. Here you will find resources to help you learn the topics, ability to track your progress and mark problems for future revision, links to GitHub and YouTube solutions, and the ability to filter problems by keyword difficulty and pattern. Here are some tips while practicing on lead code. Take your time. 
Don't rush through problems just to increase your problem count. Instead of focusing on the quantity of problems you solve, focus on what you learn from each problem. It's far better to deeply understand and solve 50 problems than to superficially solve 500 problems. After solving a problem, ask yourself, why does this solution work? What's the one key insight that made everything else easier? Also, try to make it fun. There is a fun in learning to solve coding challenges. It's not just about getting a job. I was able to solve such a high number of problems because I genuinely enjoyed challenging myself and felt excited whenever my solution got accepted. Instead of focusing on individual questions, focus on identifying underlying patterns that connect similar problems. On lead code, you will come across multiple problems that follow a similar pattern. Once you solve one of them, you can apply the same approach to solve others. For example, after learning the monotonic stack pattern, I was able to solve over 10 similar problems easily. Here are some of the most important patterns you should know about. I made a video covering the 15 most important lead code patterns I learned after solving over 1500 problems. You can check it out later. On algomaster.io, I have categorized problems by pattern. This makes it easy to focus on one pattern at a time. By going through the list, you will get to know all the important patterns for coding interviews. How to approach a new problem? Here is a step-by-step -step guide. First, read the problem statement twice. The first time, focus on getting the big picture. What is the problem asking you to do? On the second read, pay attention to specific constraints and conditions. These small details often provide clues for optimizing your solution. Next, analyze the input and output examples. Walk through the input and output step by step to understand how the problem works. I found that many times, simply walking through a few examples helped me figure out the solution. Next, visualize with pen and paper. Many problems, especially the ones related to trees and graphs, are much easier to understand when you draw them out. Try to take examples that cover different scenarios and input sizes. Think about any edge cases that might come up. Start with a brute force approach. Don't expect to come up with the most optimal solution right away. First, see if you can solve the problem using a brute force approach. While it might not be efficient, it gives you a baseline to improve upon. Next, optimize your solution. Once you have a brute force solution, focus on optimizing it. Here are few things to consider. Leverage unused information. Look for details you might have missed. For instance, if the problem is stays that array is sorted, consider leveraging this to use binary search or a two-pointer approach. Pre-compute information. If certain calculations are repeated multiple times, consider pre-computing them. Use techniques like prefix sums or frequency counts to avoid redundant calculations. Hash tables are widely used in interview questions and this would be at the top of your mind. Make time versus space trade-offs. Sometimes, using additional memory, example hash tables, can speed up your solution. Do a data structure brainstorm. Run through the popular data structures and try to apply each one to the problem at hand. Also, keep it simple. Avoid overcomplicating your solution. At every stage, ask yourself, is there a simpler way to do this? This will not only make your solution easier to understand, but it will also reduce the chances of errors during coding. And the last, develop the habit of analyzing the time and space complexity of every problem you submit. How much time should I spend on each problem? When you are just starting out, even easy problems can take a while to solve. That's completely normal. Your main goal in the beginning should be to focus on learning and understanding the problem deeply. Real progress happens when you take the time to think, make mistakes and refine your approach. Some problems involve specific tricks or patterns that are hard to figure out unless you have seen them before. Spending hours on such problems without progress can be counterproductive. Here is a good rule of thumb. Give yourself 30 to 60 minutes of focused effort for each problem. If I stay stuck, it's okay to look at hints or solutions. Read the official solution and try to understand the top voted solutions on lead code discussion forum. And don't just move on after viewing the solution. Try to grasp why the solution works and how you can apply this approach to solve similar problems. Rewrite the solution from scratch without looking at the code. Writing it yourself helps you internalize the approach. If you couldn't solve the problem on your first attempt, mark it for revision and revisit it after a few weeks. Revisiting problems helps reinforce your understanding and ensures long-term retention. Avoid memorization. One of the most common mistakes, one that I made myself, is memorizing solutions to difficult problems and moving on. At first, it might seem like a shortcut, but in reality, it's a big mistake for three main reasons. You will quickly forget memorized solutions. Without understanding the logic behind them, they won't stick in your memory. Your problem-solving skills won't improve, and you will struggle in interviews. Most interviewers ask variant of problems or follow-up questions, and without a deep understanding, you won't be able to adapt. Instead of memorizing, focus on understanding the solution, even if it takes hours. Break it down step by step and ask yourself, why does this approach work? What's the key insight that simplifies the problem? This effort pays off in the long term. The deeper your understanding, the more confident you will feel explaining your thought process during interviews. Practice in a timed environment. Now, solving problems during an interview is very different from solving it from the comfort of your home. That's why it's a good idea to time box yourself and practice in a timed environment after you have learned the basics and solved 100 to 150 problems. For easy problems, aim to complete them in 10 to 15 minutes. For medium problems, set a timer for up to 30 minutes. For hard problems, 
allow yourself up to an hour to take your practice a step further participate in lead code contest try virtual contest by simulating past lead code contest it's okay if you struggle to solve even one problem initially this is normal the goal is to gain experience solving problems within a time limit when i started participating in contest i could only solve one or two problems but with consistent practice i improved to solving three problems and eventually i was able to solve all of them in some of the contest now getting good at lead code isn't just about learning new concepts or solving problems it's also about retaining that knowledge over time that's why you should regularly revisit concepts and problems you have already solved especially the ones you found challenging try to solve those problems again without looking at the solution by practicing consistently and revisiting old problems you will make it much easier to retain what you have learned over time i discuss more about how to effectively revise lead code problems in this video so make sure to check it out do i need lead code premium if you are just starting out the answer is no you don't need it lead code premium offers two main benefits access to premium only problems and company specific problem list but all of those you can find easily online for free there are github repositories where you can easily find premium and company specific problems just do a quick google search be consistent getting good at lead code takes time some topics might take weeks or even months to master and that's okay be patient with yourself and remember it's completely normal to feel stuck or frustrated when working on a tough problem or grasping a complex topic if a problem feels too hard take a break then come back to it with a fresh perspective the more you practice the better you will get at solving lead code problems i hope you found this video helpful and gained valuable insights on how to get started with lead code and use it effectively if you like this video i think you will love my newsletter where i share high quality articles on dsa system design and interview preparation you can subscribe it at blog.algomaster.io if you want to learn about the most important lead code patterns i discussed after solving 1583 lead code problems make sure to check out this video thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video